Howdy. There is some um, fire going on in Switzerland. Fire fighting operation in Solothurn's Wolfsschlucht continue. Wolfsschlucht means Wolf's Gorge. A fire broke out in the forest area of Solothurn's Wolfsschlucht on Friday evening. The background is unclear. The large scale operation also continues on Saturday. There's fire. And you can see already here from the pictures. Hmm. There might be rather interesting geological features there. And that's what it's about. The forest fire has been raging in Solgrun's Wolfsschlucht since Friday evening. Several hundred square meters are in flames. A large-scale operation by the police, fire brigade and disaster prevention is underway. A massive fire is currently raging in the forest area of the Solothurn Wolfsschlucht, as the Solothurn Cantonal Police confirmed when asked by 20 minutes. There was a major fire and large-scale operation was underway. The first reports of this were received at the Solothurn Cantonal Police Alarm Center on Friday evening at 4, 5.40 p.m. Firefighting operation continues. So I thought that uh, let's check it out on Google Earth. Is there anything interesting? Because I thought that, yeah, it might well have something to do with the topic of mountain water. And there are many videos about this already. 361. <laughs> Who would have thought? But anyway, there is also my paper existing, which has the name Mountain Water, a new approach to mountain forming volcanism glaciers and the role of water in an electric environment. Uh, this is Baden, which is at the end of the Jura Mountains, in which the fire is happening. And obviously you can see <laughs> there has been something going on in the past. Otherwise we wouldn't have these kind of rock formations. And it might not have been plague tectonics. Te textbooks and geoscientists may be wrong about how the Alps were formed. Hmm. Yeah, so this paper is some own thoughts about the whole action of how the Alps actually could have been formed in the first place. I won't now not go into all of this, but did you know that there is like many pile dwellings around the Alps? Some of them look like this. That's in the Lake Constance. The Romans put great effort into building many thermal bath complexes and all kinds of other things in the region. The town Baden, from which the first picture is, has a very long tradition of thermal bathing, which was started originally officially by the Romans. Baden means simply bathing. It has the hottest and most mineral rich water in Switzerland. It is located at a geologically interesting place. The river limit flows through it in a rather steep valley, joining two rivers after a few kilometers i.e. the R and the Royce. The three rivers discharge as the R into the river Rhine only after a few kilometers. Here we have the connection to volcanoes because the river Rhine turns in Basel 90 degrees north after the Kaiserstuhl Vulcano. So that's a map. We have the Kaiserstuhl Vulcano. Maybe some quakes here going on. The river Rhine, which makes a 90 degree turn to the north. And it continues somewhere here. But here are the three rivers I've been just mentioning. And pardon, the city is here. Where we have also the Jura Park Aargau. The oldest nuclear power plant still functioning in the world, if I'm 
not mistaken. The Synchrotron Light Source of Switzerland, the Power Sharer Institute, PSI, and yeah, there's another nuclear power plant somewhere here. But I'm just now the things I mentioned, they are all somewhere here. And there is also this kind of nuclear waste storage facility. <laughs> but otherwise, there's nothing to see there. Except some old iron mines and stuff like that. And I think the place where the, where the fire is, is somewhere here. So it's not too far and it's still within the region of the Jura mountain range. Roman Legionnaires built the first large-scale thermal baths here in the 2nd century AD, which paved the way for the spa settlement of Aqua Helveticae. The baths at Aqua Helveticae made up the most prominent Roman spa settlement in the territory of present-day Switzerland. So it wasn't always Switzerland. <laughs> which probably could mean that it won't be forever there. But let's leave this out of the discussion. And served as a place for medical treatments as a religious center and as an important social meeting place. Yeah, the Romans knew how to have fun. And of course, maybe we have a dragon and the cosmic wheel as well. And in Baden also, we have the Fulgurites. <laughs> so it's not too far-fetched to claim that geothermal energy is part of the catalogue of volcanism and not only a side effect. Yeah, this is what I think. It's somehow funny or interesting watching some volcano videos or whatever stuff, reading about them. They are always, yeah, yeah, there's a volcanic eruption and there's also water, which could create this freomagmatic eruption and stuff like this. But yeah, it's just there disrupting or disturbing the actual eruption of the volcano. No, it doesn't. There's so much water on, under the crust or under our feet in our crust. You have no idea. And all the water, which is part of whatever volcanic complex, is hot or very specially rich in minerals. No, it's just like water. As a very good evidence that the forming process of Baden's interesting geology also included electricity, we only have to look at the 20 meter high fulgurites in the Davis cellar which is a area which is situated about one kilometer from the thermal springs but about one and a hundred meters higher yeah it's like you go up from the valley the springs were of course existing and used before the arrival of the romans the following picture figure seven is from an article made in 2011 by the National Renewable Energy Laboratory with the title A Broad Overview of Energy Efficiency and Renewable Energy for Department of Defense Installations, U.S. Government. It shows that almost all Central Europe has geothermal potential, potential which also might be an indicator for its relatively young geological age. Geothermal activity in Central Europe has always been a big part of its history, past, present, and will also be in its future. So that's the geothermal potential of Central Europe or Europe in general. And we are watching somewhere here. I mean the fire, which I am supposed to talk about all the time. I just wanted to point out one more time that look at Turkey. Hmm. There is a lot of heat. 
So if you assume, as I do, <laughs> that geothermal potential means basically volcanic activity, yeah, then probably Europe looks a bit different because somehow it is assumed that Europe is very stable. There's nothing going on and every now and then a few earthquakes, but that's it. And all the volcanoes are extinct. Yeah, that's a little bit more than 10 years old, this map. So I don't think there has happened huge changes in that. Or maybe if there has been some changes, there would be more areas deeper red. But anyway, uh, let's go for the quake. No, it's the fire. The reason why I talk about quakes all the time is because I made the Volcano application to load all the quakes from the last seven days because I wanted to know is there any quake activity in the vicinity where the fire is. So now that's Google Earth. Wolfsschlucht Herpetswil, tourist attraction in Herpetswil, Switzerland. Let's check out the pictures. I have been uh, looking around quickly, and since I, in a way, know the area, I haven't been, as far as I remember, I haven't been in this exact place, but I grew up in that region, so it's not something I haven't seen ever. But since I learned so many new things about geology, rock forming processes due to electricity and electromagnetic radiation and stuff like that, weather and many other things, it's always fascinating to take a look at these. Yeah, that's that's a very nice place. Not too sharp, but you get the idea. It's a gorge and it's very steep. Yeah, that's an interesting feature. There's like this kind of a crust or a shell on top of that. This might be even a tetrahedron. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I found something which was very interesting, which is not in this particular gorge, but I just wanted to show you what's the thing about. Yeah, check this out. There is a drop which just then. Cool down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be very cool to go around there. Maybe one day. Yeah, it might be wood. I don't know. Doesn't matter. Yeah, now we get an idea of the thing. And these kind of places are all over the place. It's all limestone and there are many, 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 many caves and cave-like things. And cracks and stuff like that. So these were all the pictures. Somewhere here is the fire. I didn't took the time to really figure out what exactly the place could be because I think it's already interesting enough to just see the region. I think we are looking at tetrahedrons. Bereloch, welchen Rohr? Yeah, 
It's a bear's hole, which is a cave, I think. Yeah. And what a cave do we find? These are very interesting features. Very interesting. Yeah, this would be a very nice place to go around. Because for me, it's very hard to believe that glaciers have done this. I think there was water flushing through that when it was still more or less. I mean, the this the rock was somehow still malleable, formable. And it also could be very well that they have all been submerged to some degree in water as they were created. Or they were at least very, very wet. Yeah. Maybe this kind of cement-like structure which got moved around by very strong winds which got created by very strong electric currents and boulders flew around because they might have happened there has been maybe some big discharge event once and then has been several smaller ones afterwards as the mountains already were created and they were some of them maybe have been still warm and malleable and some have been already cold and hard so to say and if they would have experienced a strong electrical discharge they would just have flew in apart. So now I'm trying to find this one other place. Lourdes Grotte? Yeah, that's another cave. But it's not the one I'm searching for. Let's just have a quick peek. Water. And it seems there's also water every now and then coming out of the holy place itself. But anyway, since I'm not searching for this, We are very close. Because I found something where we have the devil doing its thing. Oberpip. Yeah, there's another gorge. Like I said, they're all over the place. I think the smaller ones aren't even marked here. Beradoch, Wolfslucht. Yeah, this doesn't lead anywhere. Yeah. This is the one I meant. The Devil's Gorge in Hagendorf. Because I thought, wow, this is a Tuva ditch. There is very calcium rich water coming out of the mountain and it depletes calcium and releases CO2. And there are several of those. For example, in the Yellowstone National Park, and I assume everybody knows that Yellowstone National Park is a volcano. And we have one of them there. And you can see it's very mossy. So there is very much CO2 coming out of this water. 
and it is in the water and there's everywhere where you can, where you can see this kind of limestone rocks with many mosses on top of it and there's special water now let's call it volcanic water it's mountain water because if there's water pouring out of a mountain it is a cryptodome which is a kind of a volcano yeah, I'm not making this up, you can read it. Wikipedia, for example. Yeah, very interesting places. Very interesting. And then was this thing here. There's a fountain in the middle of the forest. <laughs> and I thought, yeah, that's something very interesting. Has there, has there been something in the past which, like, you know, mythological tales, stories from the past, those weird stories which are crazy because they are told by ancient people? Because I thought that, yeah, it's not that often that you stumble across this kind of a fountain in the middle of the forest. Obviously, it's man-made. There has to be a reason for why there is something like this. And I found that. Tüfel Schlucht Hagendorf. Tüfel means devil. Schlucht means gorge. It's naturally radiantly beautiful. Radiantly? So that's mm, Google translation <laughs> from Swiss German. Now let's just quickly undo the translation. So undo. <clears throat> Let me read to you Swiss German, which is not the Swiss German I used. Because you don't have to go far, 20 kilometers, and people talk already very differently. There has been many tribes back in the days. The Tüfelschlucht. The Felsengrache, wo der Kollergrappe uns höfere Pechli im Hagedorfer Berg aufgefressen hei, hat nicht eins der Wüst namen Tüfelschlucht gehabt. Das ist es so gsi. Vom Ungerwald her ist ein ist ein Teufel mit einer armen Seele gekommen. Er hat sie beim Wüst oben wollen go in die Hölle abliefern. Auf dem Weg hat er sich verlaufen und ist unbesinnet in die Schlucht vom Köllerbach hineingeraten. Da ist es jetzt schön kühl, hat er gesagt, und ist die der armen Seele in einen grossen Glunke hineingekumpelt. Jö, hat das ein Fuß gegeben und ein Dampf. Aber dem Teufel hat das Baden im herrlich kalten Wasser können. Wo er dem die Seele in die Hölle buxiert hat, ist er mit der ganzen Rotte von seinen Kameraden im Flügraben zugekommen. Yes. This was very sketchy. <laughs> Now in English. So, you will probably notice how the AI was struggling to make a translation out of that. Because it's not German. The Felsengrache, where the Hollegrabe und the Höferbachli im Hagedorfer Berg called Ausgefressen, had no nicht Eiser the mean name Tüfelschlucht. That's it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's just basically, it, it didn't have always the name of this devil's cave, gorge. And from the Ungerwald, which is a place, there are some devils. There came, there came a devil with a poor soul, which he was about to put to hell. He got lost and stumbled across this Höllerbach gorge. It's very nice, so he jumped into a big pond Yep, there is a lot of steam, and a lot of steam. But for the devil, swimming in the wonderfully cold water was fine. 
whoever lost his soul in hell. He had the whole group echo it by his comrades in the river grave. This sounds really strange, but he went there, the devil, after he threw the poor soul into hell. And then he jumped into this water pond and he really liked it. Then he went back and he took all his friends there to bath. Yeah, it was awesome. And there has been this one... Let's translate it back or undo the translation quickly. Undo? Schwafel. Er hat nach Schwafel und Brand gestunken. It smelled to sulfur and burned stuff. So we have to assume that either there is sulfur somewhere down there, and if there is sulfur, which could be very well possible, because we have this tufa dish where we have to see all this casting rich water pouring out of the ground, and there are many volcanoes which are emitting sulfur, or create sulfur, or like the sulfurata in Italy. So this was a very interesting thing. And why this shouldn't have to do anything with Venus as well. Or maybe some CME from the sun creating very strong telluric currents and stuff started to burn. And he also says down here, as the dive will come, Let's translate this quickly back into some kind of English. Rock Mox. <laughs> <coughs> no. But anyway, it is said when the devil has been there, he threw around trees, burnt the trees, and very huge rock boulders just flew around. Yeah, we could expect this from very strong electrical discharge events. And in order to close up the video, these are earthquakes from seven days. We are somewhere here looking for the fire. And four days ago has been a quake here. So there, obviously, nothing seems to be going on earthquake-wise. Which we cannot say from other places in Europe. Like in Poland, Slovakia, or maybe I have to make a video about this because Jamuni, Gran Choras, I have been talking about this many times already, but there is something going on. Mountains, glaciers, earthquakes. I think. Glaciers are lava streams made of water, which means the glacier carrying mountain would be a volcano. Hmm. Mount St. Helens has the world's fastest growing glacier in its caldera. Yeah. Hmm. But anyway. Thanks.